you are potentially wasting hours if you're not using this feature in Photoshop that I feel like no one really talks about. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Deron with DeronSupply.com, and I'm here to help you design smarter, not harder. Today, we're exploring Layer Comps, a Photoshop panel that lets you create snapshots of your design by saving different versions of your layers panel. Essentially, it lets you document or save all of your layers' current visibility, position, or appearance into a comp or into many comps and you're also able to batch export these comps into individual files. There's a ton of use cases that I personally can't live without, so let's get into it. First, how the hell do I even access this feature? What are you talking about? In any document, simply navigate to Window and then Layer Comps. I like to dock it in the top right corner here. You can put it wherever you want. You can even leave it floating if you want. I like to put it right here. So using this is very simple. All you have to do is click on this plus button to create a new Layer Comp. So I'm just gonna paint a dot here. Let's click on this plus button and you can choose to save the visibility, position, and appearance of the layers in your layers panel. Typically, you just wanna check all of these. And if you're not gonna name your layers, at least name your layer comps, which is advice I'm gonna give and not take. Anyway, I'll press okay here. And then you can start to change things around in your design. Obviously, this is not a design right now, but say I wanted to move the circle all the way to the top left corner here. You can see that this layer comp becomes inactive now. To make that layer comp active, we could press on this box right here, and that's gonna take us to the layer comp that we saved, and that was when the circle was positioned in the middle of the canvas. So, so it documented this layer's position on the canvas, and no matter where I move this to, I can always go back to that layer comp to that saved position. It's also gonna save what layers were on and what layers were off. So if I create a new layer here and paint in a different dot, you'll see that that layer comp is again now inactive because we changed what's going on in the layers panel. So we're no longer in this layer comp. But if I go back to that layer comp by clicking on it, you can see that we still have the position of this layer saved and the visibility of the other layer saved in which it's not visible. But of course I can make another layer comp where this one is visible. So I can click on the plus button to save this as a layer comp. And now I can switch back and forth between the two very easily. And obviously this has a lot more complex implications. So in the context of an actual design, you can iterate as you go and save each iteration and the pretty much version or history of that design into a layer comp. So with this design, say this is my base starting point, I wanna save this as a layer comp. And maybe I add some things or move some things around and just try taking it in some sort of uh, more fleshed out direction. I can create this iteration and you know, maybe I really like it and I wanna keep iterating on this you know, version of the design. I could save this as another layer comp and then keep iterating from here and repeating that process. Or maybe I don't like this. Maybe I wanna take it back to the drawing board. I can always go back to our original sort of base design by clicking on our first layer comp here. So now you're starting to see the context in which you can use this in the actual design process. So you can really start to iterate on your design and find different things that you like and just sort of, you know, flesh out the kind of design that you're aiming for and save each of those versions as a layer comp. And you can go back and, you know, just switch between all those different versions and see what you like, what you don't like, or just the progress of your design as you built it. And that's also really useful, say, if you're iterating a design for a client, you can create and iterate a lot of different versions of the same kind of design super easily. And like I mentioned earlier, you're also able to batch export all of these iterations or these layer comps into individual files and I'll get into that later. Two things that are important to note: when you save or make a new layer comp, that layer comp will be active when you make it but as soon as you change anything on the canvas, say you move something around or hide or show a layer, you can see that layer comp now becomes inactive. You don't have that document icon here to indicate that the layer comp is active. So as soon as you change something in your composition, it's going to make the current layer comp inactive because it's assuming that you're iterating away from that layer comp. And you can always go back to that layer comp by clicking on it, but say you wanna actually update this layer comp. So maybe I want this down here, but I don't wanna actually make it into a new layer comp. I just wanna update this layer comp. All I have to do is select that layer comp and click on this sort of refresh looking icon down here. That's gonna update everything about the layer comp into the one you have selected. And another very important thing is that this will not save the actual pixel data of your layer. So if you were to scale or transform something, it's going to stay that way across all of your layer comps. So it's not gonna save any changes you make to the actual pixels on a layer, say you resize it or something, but what it will save is the relative data. So things like uh, that layer's position on the canvas, whether it's visible or not, and its appearance or layer style. So how do I implement this in my workflow? I find that there's really four main 
use cases. Number one is exporting things for social media. I did a whole video on this, so go check that out. But basically I have all my slides saved as layer comps and then I batch export them as JPEGs to post on social media. Number two is exporting photos with layered edits or number three, which is pretty similar, but being able to export designs with layered edits. Pretty much exporting layers to files, but with more control, and I'll get into that. And number four, this is my top use case, which is using layer comps to iterate on your designs. Let's go over that one first, because if you're not already doing this, you're seriously missing out. So often when I'm designing, and I'm sure this is the case for you as well, you have a lot of your elements in play, but you haven't really landed on the perfect arrangement for them, and you're unsure where to take the composition. I usually have a base design, you know, where I started out at, and it has the main elements or just things I wanna try including in the design. And then I wanna kinda of branch off and try some stuff and see if it works. And if not, I take it back to the drawing board and try something else. Or if it does work, you know, I keep iterating off that in branches and just going down different rabbit holes of different versions of that design. Layer comps are perfect for that. In fact, you can see my entire thought process for this design just by scrolling through my layer comps. So say I try something out and I don't like it, I can always just revert back to the previous layer comp and try again. Or if I do like it, I could save that as a comp in itself and keep iterating from there. I started off with this graphic I made mostly in Illustrator and you can see I had trouble finding a background and a layout for this. So here I try out some different backgrounds and some different typography. Eventually I realized I got a, a lot of negative space to fill up. So I bring that main element down here and I start iterating up here. And eventually through all this iteration process, I finally land on a solid composition that I really like. And then from here, it was just a matter of figuring out a color combo that I like. So I did the same exact process for that. Again, I'm using layer comps to save different colorways of this same graphic. As you can see, as I flip through these layer comps, you can see all the different versions that I tried with all these different color fill layers down here. And without using layer comps here, it would have been such a mess and such a pain to flip between the different variations and, and really find one that I like. I ended up going with this one and this one, which is on my Instagram. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've ever done. But yeah, so to translate this to your work, simply just open up this panel the next time you're designing. And as you design and iterate, just start saving layer comps each time you try something new or are about to make a big change. And eventually you'll end up with something like this, where you pretty much have a history of your entire design and your thought process and all the variations you came up with in case you wanna go back to one or just continue iterating. And that's what made it really easy for me to finally land on that final design. Let's check out use cases two and three now, which are also extremely useful. And here we'll go into how we can use layer comps for easier exporting. Okay, using layer comps when editing photos. I do this a lot with something like my analog looks template, but this applies to any time you're using a similar workflow where say you have a bunch of photos that you wanna apply layered edits to. So you have your adjustments and textures and color corrections on top of that image. So you can see here with my analog looks template, I'm using some of the uh, textures here and I've got the color corrections or LUTs in here. So say I wanna apply, you know, this combo of texture and color correction to this image. Matter of fact, all of these images in here, which are part of a photo shoot. If you wanna export all of these photos with these layered edits on top, with that texture and that LUT, or whatever adjustments you have, you know, on top of these photos, you might think that you have to, you know, merge all of them with a copy of the textures and the LUTs, or just go in and individually save each one, but you don't have to do any of that. You can actually export all of these with all of the textures and whatever you got applied to all of these photos at once. So with my layered color corrections and textures on top of all of these images, what I could do is make a layer comp for each image. So I'm gonna press this plus button here to make a layer comp for this first image. I would hide that and then for the second image do the same process. Now, if you're working with a lot of photos, obviously that's a bit of a tedious process in itself. And so I never really go individually in and make a layer comp for each photo. What I do is I create an, an action that does that for me. And it's really simple. I'll show you how to do it. I have that action right here. So when I click play on that, it's just gonna create a layer comp for that current layer, hide it and then go to the next layer and I could just keep playing that action. It's gonna make me a layer comp um, pretty much for all of these photos as I keep playing that action. So if you wanna make that action for yourself, just open up the actions panel from window and actions, click on this plus button here. I'm gonna name this layer comp per layer Then just press record. And from here, we're gonna record that action. So literally all you have to do is press this plus 
on the layer comp window to make a new layer comp. And you see it's gonna record that step into the action. And then we just wanna hide this layer and go to the next one. So just simply hide the layer and you're gonna to have to use a keyboard shortcut here to go to the previous layer. And that's gonna be Alt or Option and then the left bracket on your keyboard. And that's gonna record that step as select backward layer. The reason you can't just select the previous layer is it's going to record that step as selecting that actual layer. And we don't want to record that step as selecting that specific layer. We wanna just record that step as selecting the backward layer. So that's it. Then you can just press the stop button here to stop recording that action. And now you can start at the top of your photos and just play this action for each photo you have. And it's going to create a layer comp for each of those photos, keeping all of our adjustments intact. As you can see, we have all our photos here as layer comps with all of those edits applied to each one. So once you're done, you could simply go to file, export, and then export layer comps to files. And that's going to batch export all of your layer comps into individual files. You can of course choose whatever settings you want. And the best thing about this method is that it's super modular. So especially when you're using something like my analog looks template, where you have a bunch of these different textures or different looks that you can sift through, say for one of these photos you specifically like or the look of a different texture or a different LUT. So let me just switch up the combo here. I'll use this speckly texture and a different color correction on here. So say I like this more, I could just save this as a comp and now that's gonna export alongside all the other ones with this specific texture and look combo um, applied to it. This is something I also do when just exporting any designs or images. So for example, when I was crafting the web page for my Dither Tone plugin, it's got all these neat little images in here to show off all the different algorithms you can achieve with this plugin and all the different effects and settings and whatnot. And so I had this PSD here with all of those different images saved as different layer comps. And that also worked really nicely because on each of these images, I had this border here. Here you could see it better. So I had this border going around all of these images and I didn't wanna to have to apply that individually to every image. So yeah, being able to just leave something like a border on in all of the layer comps makes this super easy. And of course, I was just able to go up to file export and export all of these comps into individual files. And by the way, Dither Tone is getting a massive update in the next week or so. I am super excited for that. Here's a little sneak peek of one of my favorite features coming to the plugin. Yes, that is all made entirely in Photoshop. So if you don't already have this plugin, invest now all users are gonna get the update for free and it is just absolutely gonna change the game. But anyway, that is how I leverage layer comps to speed up my workflow and I hope it's gonna speed up yours too. If you found this helpful, please let me know by leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. No, I didn't forget about 100K. I love y'all. Thank you so much for hitting that milestone with me. Absolute dream come true and I can't wait to have that silver plaque behind me in my video, so that's gonna be really cool. Just such an achievement for me, and I'm forever thankful to you guys uh, for all your support and everything you've allowed me to do with this channel. And so I really wanna come up with something special to celebrate 100K. I can't say it enough, I love you guys. I'm so glad to have this little community here. It's truly changed my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Peace.